Welcome to the Art of Holding. This is a section where I communicate with you and let you know what we're going to be doing in this collection of courses. So the first thing that we want to do is teach you how to develop and create a holding company structure from the legal entity, from the holding company, to the operating companies, to the EINs, and the corporate banking. Many, many years ago, I didn't know how none of this stuff worked. And it was kind of scary, it was a little foreign. So one of the goals of the art of holding is to dispel and to eliminate that fear. Because fear is incapacitating. When people are fearful, or uncertain or scared, they don't take action. So this is one of the things. I want to educate you on what a corporation is. I want to educate you on what an LLC, and the LLC from a legal entity standpoint is a corporation. And you know, there's a C Corp, there's an LLC, and there's partnerships. And these are corporate entities that separate your business from you personally, and we're gonna get into all of that. And also, what I wanna do is have you have a greater understanding of what a corporate citizen is. I use that term, but I don't really do a good job of explaining what a corporate citizen is. And I need to tell you a story to illustrate what a corporate citizen is and what isn't a corporate citizen. Many, many years ago, I had a physical resale business where I would go and buy storage auctions and then I would resell the contents to the public off Craigslist, online, Amazon, wherever I could. And that business was an LLC. Now, here's the big difference between that business, which was incorporated, it was an LLC, it was a partnership between me and my partner, and what I do now. That was a business that was unable to be systemized, processed, and set up where you can be apart from the business. And this is one of the things that I want to go heavy and deep on. I want to help you create a business that once you get it built, in the beginning phases, you're going to be working a lot. It's going to require a lot of your time. But as you build it up, hire people and scale up, you can literally do what one gentleman did. There was this one guy in Inc. Magazine, I forget the name of his business, but he literally took a year off from his business and came back and it was still running. It was still making money. So this is the ethos that we're going to be working on, creating businesses that can operate without us because when I became, I wasn't a corporate citizen when I had the resale business, wasn't. I was just hustling, but I was unaware. And then once I came to YouTube, and YouTube is an employee of mine. YouTube is an employee, the internet is an employee, uh, my online course platforms are employees, but the employee, the employee boss relationship is very different because I don't have to pay my employees. They pay me. And we're going to talk about those concepts of how to set up a business where you can leverage the internet. And if you were a member of the first corporate toolbox, you're going to get all of that internet stuff as well as this. And if you're just joining here, the art of holding, you're just getting this. Because I want to build durable, sustainable businesses that create everlasting income. So that's one of the things. And this is about becoming a corporate citizen. When you become a corporate citizen, you have corporate entities and you have taken many things out of your life, such as where I sit the house, the corporation handles, the car are part of the corporate structure. So my personal spend, my personal expenses, say 800, 1200 bucks a month, and everything else is handled by the corporation. 
this is something that I need to teach. This is something I need to educate people on because it makes your life better. Because essentially, I am using things that normally would be liabilities. Like you go out and buy a house on your balance sheet, it's a liability because you have to pay that monthly mortgage. On the bank's balance sheet, it's an asset because they're getting money each month from you. So we're going to talk about those concepts and business concepts. We're going to go really, really deep into the corporate citizen lifestyle, the corporate citizen ethos, and we're going to get into developing corporate banking. Corporate banking. There should be a setup for your holding company and there should be banking for your operating company. So I'm going to teach you how to do that. Also, I'm going to teach you how to build business credit. Business credit is a super popular thing right now on YouTube and social media. And there are many people who's like, you can literally develop business credit. Just snap your fingers and you have business credit. As someone who has business credit, I'm here to tell you it's not like that. But in the corporate toolbox, we're going to talk about developing business credit. And I'm going to give you some guidelines here as we talk about this right now. Um, many people want to get business credit for each business, which is possible. You can do that. Uh, I'm going to have business credit for my holding company. I'm going to have business credit for my trading company. It is possible, but this is something you need to do because with business credit, you have to be careful and judicious with it. Like personal credit, it goes bad. They just put it on your credit report and that's it. Business credit providers and furnishers will sue you. They will come and seize assets. They will come after you. So this isn't something to be toyed with. You know, I'm not saying don't get business credit. I'm saying get business credit and be a good steward of business credit and use it appropriately because it can backfire on you. But we will be learning how to build business credit and we will give you some instructions on how to set your company up for business credit. There is the old business credit methodology of going out, getting Granger's, Uline, um, Staples, getting, getting your net 30s, and then going ahead and building a Paydex score when done in Bradstreet. That's the old way. Uh, the business credit that I have, I did not do any of that. And I'm going to teach you my method, methodology and the things that you can do to develop business credit and how to set yourself up for business credit. Now, this is where we begin to cook with gas. I'm going to teach you how to start a business from scratch. This is something I've done a few times. And the process is always the same. You have an ideal for a product or service, and then you need to sell that product or service to customers. That's the, that's the secret ingredient of a business. Products, services, customers, and in that white space is the exchange of their dollars for your value. And we're going to talk about that because there are many things here in current times on YouTube that are talking about you know, this business where they, I, I've literally seen ads, you don't have to advertise, you don't have to sell anything, you don't have to have an email list. Literally all of the elements that constitute a real business, all right, you don't have to do that. All you have to do is just sit home and collect money while we run through our automated system. We're not going to talk about that stuff. We're going to talk about how to develop a real business and how to deploy your capital to benefit you and grow your business. Because starting a business in the beginning can be tough because I want you to think of yourself when you were a baby. You were a baby at one point. Every one of us was a little baby. And at that one point, you were a few weeks old. You were helpless. You couldn't even turn on your back. You needed someone to do everything for you. And that's what I want you to think of your business in the beginning, because essentially it's brand new. It's a baby business. It, it just can't do that much. And but the thing is, Amazon.com was once a baby business. Walmart 
was once a baby business. Google was once a baby business. Facebook was once a baby business. So just because your business is a baby and can't do anything for itself, who knows what's gonna happen in the future? Who knows how this is gonna be set up? Who knows how this is going to be put up and put together to create a system of processes that get, put money in your pocket. And we're gonna talk about the real process of starting a business. One of the things I've ascertained in recent weeks is most of the business advice on YouTube is not actual business advice. Most of the advice is how to hustle. And hustling can be good, hustling can be profitable, but let's examine what happened to me with my hustle. The storage auction business was a hustle. And when I got sick and my partner was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer, we were out of business. And to reflect 2019, I had a heart attack. I did not work for five months. My business it kept working, it kept working. I didn't have to shut down my business. I didn't have to start all over. I didn't lose anything. So essentially hustles are traps because once you start making that money, you become addicted to making that money, especially if it's good money, like stripping. Stripping is a hustle. If they go to the club, shake their booty, do their lap dances, they make money. But what happens when they don't go to the club? They don't make no money. They don't get no money. And this is one of the downfalls to the hustle because if something happens to you or you get sick, uh, recently, about two weeks ago, last, last week, not this week, but the, about two, for the last two weeks before this week, I was sick. I was really, really sick. Each day, my business provided cash, money, when I wasn't working. And this is one of the things that I'm gonna preach of creating a business, a process, a system that makes money when you're not able to make money. When you're not able to go to work and do your thing and this, this business, it just keeps making cash, keeps making cash, keeps making cash. For many years, I've learned to use digital employees and we'll talk about that in the YouTube section. At one point, Amazon was an employee that I actually had to pay quite a bit because Amazon was taking like 35% of whatever my sales were plus some additional little fees, about 37, 37%. So, but Amazon was an employee that worked seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And it made me a lot of money. So we're gonna talk about using digital employees. We're gonna talk about setting up and we're gonna talk about actually hiring people and tr creating training programs and creating systems and processes, which are gonna be challenging. But what you do today will determine your tomorrow. And if you do this today, four years, five years from now, you're gonna wake up one day and like, I ain't going to work. And you know what? Work will keep going because you will have employees and you will have systems, and you have processes, and you could lay in bed and make money while you're relaxing. Make money while you're chilling. Make money while you're sick. Make money while you're on vacation. And this is going to be a big thing that I'm gonna push and push and push and push and push because hustling is sexy. Hustling is amazing. You can make money hustling, but at the end of the day, a lesson that I've learned in my personal life, hustles are traps. And if you are not careful, when you need that hustle the most, that's when that hustle is going to let you down. Whereas a business, 2019, I had a heart attack. And my business was providing me cash money each one of those five months that I was not working. I wasn't making videos, I wasn't doing anything. I was just in there laying in the bed 
healing up and trying to figure out what had happened to me. So we're going to be really, really drilling home of developing businesses, hiring people, developing systems, getting staff. This is the things that we're going to do in the art of holding because the holding company structure is important, but what's more important is the business. And there are so many businesses that you can pick and choose from. And, you know, I did a video for Savage Finance, not yeah, Savage Finance, where I've not had a job in 21 years. So I've actually entered the point because from the ages of 18 to 33, I had jobs. So 18 to 30 was 12 years. So for 15 years, I had jobs. I was in the military. I got the military. I worked a regular d deal. Then from age 33 to 34, I've been self-employed or a business owner. World of difference, world of difference in lifestyle, world of difference in freedom, world of difference in flexibility. And I want to teach that because there is nothing like waking up each day knowing that you're in control of your own destiny. There's nothing like it. And I'm, there needs to be more corporate citizens. There need to be more people out here doing their things, setting it up. And this is the things that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about setting up your business because essentially one of the things that I, I will caution you again, and I see it all over the internet, how you can set up these things really, really fast. I'm going to tell you a little secret. If you can build it real fast, it can come apart real fast. If it takes time and effort, like the business that I built that supported me when I was recovering from my heart attack, my business didn't wither. It didn't disappear. It didn't just go away. But something you can build just that fast, it can come apart just that fast. So that's one of the things that we're talking about. Durable, sustainable businesses something that you can leave to your children, something that will, let's say, let me go ahead and give you another idea. The perpetual business. One of the things that you see on YouTube is, you know, buy a business, sell a business, get a big payday. How about this? You start a business and you develop it correctly and get it to the point where it runs without you, where you don't even have to go into the office. How would that look in retirement that you have a business that is cranking you six or seven figures a year and you don't have to work because you just are the manager and the organizer. So one of the things we're going to teach people is how to be managers and organizers because the bane of the hustle is I do everything. I'm out here hustling. I'm hustling. I'm hustling. I'm making the sales. I'm, I'm doing everything. And there's no systems. There's no process. There's no employees in place. And literally this is a recipe for burnout. So we're going to be talking about that and teaching you this and making you comfortable with becoming a corporate citizen because it is a journey. It is a journey, but it's a beautiful journey because as I have learned from personal experience, the difference between a hustle and a business is distinct and very, very, very big because you get yourself a hustle. And here's the thing, it's really bad to hustle and be carrying debt. One of the things that I am really grateful for, my business has such a good cash flow that I never got into a debt situation. So when I was sick, my cars didn't get repossessed. You wanna know why? Because they were paid for. I didn't, I don't have a lot of, I didn't have a lot of, I didn't have, I, at that time, I don't think I had any debt, none. And this is another thing that I want to teach you because this is something I learned in the storage auction business that many, many people would have good businesses, but because they did not have financial controls, they did not have the way to handle their business. Uh, bad things would happen and they would go out of business because they did not know how to quench their thirst. They were just spending, balling out, buying all this other stuff and literally sucking the business dry. And we're going to teach you how to manage and organize your business and manage and organize your cash flow. Because that's very, very important. 
because once you are in charge of your cash flow and you're managing your business versus your business managing you, this is when beautiful things happen. This is when we set up all types of things. This is when the world becomes a beautiful, beautiful ball of opportunity. And we're going to talk about trust at the point. But first of all, I must take you on the journey. It must be a sequential journey. First, we establish the holding company. First, we, then we establish the operating companies. Then we establish our banking structure. Then we establish the business and get the business making money. And then once we establish and build the assets, then we will grow into how to protect the asset. But many people want to talk about trust and all these other things when they have nothing to protect. And that's just kind of pointless. So we're going to do it in sequential order. We're going to talk about these things and we're going to teach you how to do it. And we're going to talk about once you get your business to a level, certain level, how you can buy wealth. There is a methodology which you can buy wealth and you can secure your family after you're gone. And we're going to be teaching that and we're going to teach all these other stuff. And we're going to teach branding and we're going to teach marketing. And we're going to teach sales and we're going to teach online sales and offline sales. And we're going to teach the corporate mindset and we're going to teach the thought process that you need to develop to become a corporate citizen. Because once you make the transformation, because right now you're just a regular person with regular thoughts and you're not thinking from a corporate perspective. You're not thinking on that fifth dimensional corporate chess playbook. And this is something that can be taught. You, I didn't know all of this. Many, many, many years ago, I used to be just like you. I did not know any of this stuff. I didn't know anything about corporations. I didn't know anything about business. I didn't know anything about sales. I didn't know anything about marketing. But over time, these are things that I learned and you too can learn that. So this is just an overview, a preparation of what you're going to learn in the art of holding as we go ahead and we crank this bad boy up. So thanks for signing up. We'll see you inside the course.